We are live, yes. We are live. All right, hey everybody. I am so glad that you guys are joining us today. We have been preparing for quite some time to do this fluid and electrolytes review. We have people ask for this all the time. So today we're gonna do a one hour live review. I want you guys to come on in and just tell us where you're from, what nursing school you're from. Um, we're just gonna kind of chat with you guys for a little bit until, until we get enough people in here um, to go ahead and get it started. We have a bunch of people that um, watched our video last week and so we're super excited about that. We've done a cardiac review already where we did a full plan of care on a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. Um, we did that one and then we also did a review on Cushing's versus Addison's. Both of those are available on our YouTube page. So make sure you go and subscribe to that. Um, both of those are available and this one's gonna be available too. So we're gonna do the live video here on our Facebook feed. We will also have it ready for you guys afterwards. It'll be posted so that you can come back and watch it again or if you're missing it because you know, I don't know, you have Saturday plans like normal people, um, then you can come back and watch it. And we're also gonna post it on our YouTube channel and you guys can watch them as many times as you want to. We have a texting service that we want you guys to subscribe to so you can get all kinds of cool announcements because we do neat things here. Obviously, we're gonna do a science experiment today, which I'm feeling really cool about. So we have a texting service, subscribe to it because we'll send out giveaways and fun stuff and things. So if you want to do that today, which you should because it's neat and fun, you're going to, like I wrote this for y'all today because of all the love. So you're gonna text nursing, which hopefully we know how to spell this, to 85100 and you can do that from your cell phone, please. And that will sign you up for our texting services. We'll remind you of videos that we're posting. We will send giveaway things, we'll do promos, and then we send fun little, hey, you need to know these kind of things for nursing school. Or sometimes we send you motivational things so that you can keep on keeping on. Okay, so go ahead and subscribe to it. You will text nursing to 85100 and do it, do it now, do it now. So tell me where you guys are from, where you're coming in from, so we can just kind of chat for a minute because we had people coming in from all over the world last time. They were from everywhere. We had 45,000 people view that video. It was intense. That one was a fun one. So I really want you guys to get interactive today. I could spend probably 842 years on fluid and electrolytes. So I'm gonna try to get through as much as I possibly can today if I am chatty Cathy, which I usually am, and I just chat, 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 because I love sodium and potassium and electrolytes, um, then we may need to go ahead and, and roll over to next week. We'll make it a two-parter, because who doesn't wanna do two Saturdays in a row of fluid and electrolytes? So let us know where you're from, where you're hanging in, and we'll get through as much as we can today. Whatever we don't, we'll definitely, um, we'll pop in next week. Or maybe we'll just do a surprise video for you and text you that there's a surprise video going on. So you want to text nursing to, did I do it? Yeah, to 85100, you get it now. Okay. We have Lucy from Arkansas. Hi, Lucy. Welcome. I don't think I had anybody from Arkansas last Mary time. from Michigan. Hi, Mary. How you guys doing? Cassidy, my girl from ACC. Go oh, Dolphins. Oh, yeah, she came last time, didn't she? Amber from Cali. I almost drank our science experiment. Oh, don't do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that, but I'm getting thirsty. Kelly from Texas City. Who, Kelly? Oh, I bet that's my friend, Kelly. It's my friend. We have soy sauce from the Philippines. Oh, hey, I see what you did there. Cher from Arizona. What's up, guys? Vivian oh, from hey. Florida. All right, so as people are kind of rolling in, you can still tell us where you're from. We're really interested to see where you guys are from. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of get started and talk about some stuff. I'm super excited about our science experiment today. I've never done this live before, so just a little grace would go a really long way. So we're going to see how well this works out. Um, this is going to be a really interactive session, so I want you guys to jump in to give me the answers. We'll do call-outs to people who are really nailing the fluid and electrolytes, so don't be afraid to be wrong, right? So in nursing school, it's really important to understand that when you come into tutoring sessions or you're going into class, don't ever be afraid to be wrong. This is the spot to be wrong, right? If we're wrong in clinical or we're wrong when we're a nurse, we can kill somebody, right? So right here is a spot to be wrong, just try. Because what happens with our brain is every time we're wrong on something, your brain gets a little ashamed, okay? And we know that once we do something, we never wanna do it again if we feel a feeling that doesn't feel good. And so every time you say something wrong, you're like, oh man, that was stupid. I love that in tutoring. I tell people to be wrong a thousand times. Because every time you're wrong, it leaves an imprint on your brain that, ooh, that was wrong, don't ever say that again, and you will not make the mistake again. So if you can make 100 mistakes in here with us today, that's 100 times you won't be wrong in clinical, 100 times you won't be wrong in the hospital. So make the mistakes here, all right? Even if you shout out the wrong answer, that's okay. Because at least that tells me that you're trying to get your brain engaged. If you guys just sit here and you just try to listen to what I'm saying and you're not absorbing it or you're not interacting with me, it's not gonna give you as much bang as if you're actually interacting and trying and moving. So. 
please feel free to be wrong. Shout out as many answers as you want to. If they're wrong, I'll say, no, that's not. But listen, I like what you're thinking and we can kind of walk through that critical thinking process. Okay. I'm really thirsty. I keep wanting to drink this. I'm going to get some water in a second. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. So our biggest thing, our biggest thing today that we're going to do, Casey's here with us today, by the way. Hi. Hey, hey. Okay. You guys, we're going to have to switch around at some point so you can actually meet her. Uh, we weren't, we weren't camera ready for today. So she, her face is telling me we weren't ready. I'm always camera ready, mm -hmm. boo. All right. So our main goals for today, we're going to cover, I picked two of the biggest electrolytes for us to cover today because one hour is just not enough to even touch fluid and electrolytes all the way. So I want to make sure that we're going to cover sodium and potassium very well today so you understand that exchange and you understand what works there. We're going to cover fluid balance, like the RAS system and how that works. So you guys jump in as much as you can. We're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So I'm going to give you guys some assignments before I start chatting a little bit so that way your brains can start working. You can start typing to me because there is going to be a little bit of a lag between when I ask you questions and when you answer. So just because we're not answering you, it just takes us a minute to get all of your answers. All right. So I'm going to give you a couple assignments and then I'm going to start chatting about fluid and electrolytes because I love this and it's fun. All right. So I want you guys to tell me what does sodium do? What does potassium do? And then what's, what's the relationship between those two? That's your assignment for right now. Type it to me. Um, while we're waiting for your responses to come in, we're going to kind of talk about fluid balance. So there are a million things we could have talked about today. We've got intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, and we have potassium and sodium and magnesium and phosphorus. And then there's all these forgotten electrolytes like chloride, because nobody ever thinks about chloride, right? You guys have to know your lab values. That's important too, all right? Um, there's the RAS system, and the kidneys are involved in fluid balance, and the brain is involved in fluid balance. Your whole body's job is to maintain homeostasis, right? So there's a bunch of different things that are going to go along with fluid balance, and we're going to do you know, a, a bunch of these. So that way we can eventually get to the point where we cover every single concept. Fluid and electrolytes is really hard for people because it's really hard to remember what's coming in and what's going out and what remains. So we're going to try to make that as easy as we can for you guys today. If you have questions, shout them out. Okay, because we'll, we'll, if we don't get to them immediately, we will get to them and we'll write you guys back um, for all the questions that you have for today. All right. So does anybody have any answers for me? What does sodium do? What does potassium do? And then what's the relationship between the two? Libby Clark says it's a love-hate relationship. It is, isn't it? I love that. We should put that on a t-shirt and say sodium, potassium, love-hate. We know sodium and potassium do go on a seesaw with each other, meaning one's high, one's low, and vice versa. So it is kind of a love-hate, and we're always in a balancing situation. Sodium, potassium, right? So remember that those two are going to go on a seesaw. It is the kidney's responsibility to balance those, but the whole body is affected whenever they are out of balance. All right. Anybody else got any answers for me? Christina says sodium follows water and helps maintain fluid balance to help blood pressure. Yes. But so sodium is definitely involved in fluid balance. Sodium is definitely involved in blood pressure. What else you guys got? Christina also says potassium is big in muscle movement and blood sugar, I believe. Dot, dot, dot. Ooh, dum, dum, dum. All right. So yes, sodium is involved in muscle. It's involved in contracting things and nerve impulses. Absolutely. Anybody else got any answers for me? Elizabeth said uh, potassium is in the cell, sodium is out of the cell. Potassium's in the cell, sodium's out of the cell, yes. And that's where our seesaw balance is going to happen. So you guys ready? Let's hit it. Yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about sodium. All right. So sodium and potassium will go on a delicate balancing act, and they are balanced by the kidneys. But the results of hypernatremia, hyponatremia, are going to be seen all throughout the body. All right. So just because they're balanced in the kidneys does not mean that we're going to see just kidney signs and symptoms whenever they go out of balance. All right. So sodium's job, what do we got? Sodium's job is to form an electrical impulse. Both sodium and potassium form electrical impulses. Right. So we have, I feel like I need to get up and write something really quick. So come with me. Come with me. All right. So you guys are right that we have got, here's the cell, right? You've got potassium that's inside the cell. You've got sodium that's all outside the cell, right? And so there's this balancing act that happens whenever sodium rushes into the cell, potassium is going to rush out. So we're always gonna have a delicate balance and we're always going to be going back and forth. Our goal is to get this in homeostasis to where we're not in a seesaw this way, we are across this way. And let's we'll talk in a few minutes about what that's gonna look like, okay? And how your body does that, all right? So we've got nerve and muscle conduction. It forms an electrical charge. So when that happens, that's an electrical impulse. And that's going to really come in handy when we start talking about signs and symptoms when these are off. 
So as they have that membrane potential and there's that switching of the potassium and the sodium, you're conducting an electrical impulse. That's happening in your heart, it's happening in your muscles, it's happening in your gut, it's happening in every part of your body. So you will see that membrane potential and that balance happens and it's going to give us a electrical potential, all right, or a membrane potential electrical impulse, yes? All right, so sodium and potassium are both responsible for electrical and nerve conduction, okay? They're also responsible for blood volume balance, right? So the kidneys are gonna be the main organ and the target, right, for fluid balance. So as we realize we have too much fluid volume, the body says, we have too much volume. I'm gonna let out some sodium. I know water's gonna go with that. And so it's gonna decrease the blood pressure, all right? And so there's always going to be that balance. So if you're letting out a bunch of salt, then we know that that means your body is holding on to potassium. So you can always remember, you can even remember one of them, okay? If your body, if you know that this disease process makes you hyponatremic, most of the time you're gonna be a little hyperkalemic. Okay, so there is always going to be the balance. One will be high, one will be low. Our goal is to maintain homeostasis, but most of the time in our disease processes, you're gonna see one high and one low. I will give you some exceptions today, all right? And if you guys know of any exceptions where sodium and potassium are both high, I want you to, to uh, write to me and we're gonna talk about it in just a minute. If there are exceptions, we will talk about it, but most of the time, that's what you're gonna see. All right, so potassium is responsible also for the membrane potential, right? We're responsible for electrical impulses. When you think potassium, I want you to think heart, right? Because most of the signs and symptoms, most everything with potassium is involving the heart. That's why we can't give potassium as an IV push, right? Because why? You'll kill your patient, right? That's what they do in the prisons. We don't do that here today, okay? So don't do IV push on potassium because that's gonna affect your heart. Sodium, the key word for sodium is always gonna be brain, okay? Because both of those are balanced in the kidneys, but sodium, whether it's high or low, is gonna have brain symptoms, all right? They're gonna have neurological symptoms. Potassium, high or low, is usually going to have mostly heart, little bit of muscle symptoms, okay? Because it's forming an electrical conduction. Y'all with me? So let's talk about how we're going to balance the sodium potassium. Does anybody know what system is involved that kind of balances our sodium potassium and balances our fluid volume? Let me know, and I'm gonna go up to the board and we're gonna write down the whole thing, okay? All right. Cassidy says Raz. Oh, get it, girl. All Razzle right. dazzle. Raz. So I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds. All right, here's your assignment. 30 seconds to write down the entire RAS system, whatever you can remember. And I want to know how the RAS system works, what sparks it, and then what organ each of the functions of the RAS system or each part of the RAS system happens in. Okay? Okay. Do, 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 do. Put your hand in front of the camera. Don't look at what I'm doing. Mark says, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. You got it. Mark? Mark. Good job, Mark. All right. So you guys should be wrapping up your RAS system. You should be able to rattle it off because you know all the things, right? Okay. So the RAS system, yes, that is what it does. Is its whole purpose, and Mark nailed it as far as what it stands for. So the whole purpose is going to be to maintain our fluid volume and to maintain electrolyte balance, okay? Does anybody know what started off the whole RAS system? What is the trigger? to start that off. The RASA system's main purpose is to maintain blood pressure at a normal level, right? So if our, if our main thing is to maintain blood pressure at a normal level, then what is gonna trigger the RAS system to start? Anybody know? Hint, I already drew them. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? Amber says low blood pressure. All right, Amber. Cassidy, low fluid volume. Lewis. Oh, Amber Lewis joined us last week too, didn't she? She did. Oh, all right. So we are gonna have low fluid volume. So this is my vessel that I drew. Can you, can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is a vessel that I drew and you're gonna have low fluid volume in the vessel, okay? But there is something inside the vessels that trigger this whole thing to happen. We get low fluid volume. So say you guys are in lecture, 
gosh, for five hours, you know, and you didn't bring anything to drink and they don't let you leave to go to the bathroom because why would they? That's hateful, you know, like who needs to go to the bathroom or drink or eat during nursing school? So you haven't drank anything for the whole morning. Your fluid volume is going to go a little bit low. Remember the concept I told you last week, low fluid, low pressure, right? So my fluid level is going to go lower. My blood pressure is going to go lower. And has anybody said what it is? The main trigger? It starts to be my friend. We got a lot of decrease in blood pressures. Yeah, it starts out with our baroreceptors, okay? So there are these B baroreceptors inside the vessels and they are going to trigger the RAS system to start, right? That's what senses our low fluid volume and says, hey, let's get this whole thing started, all right? Then what's going to happen is we're about to start this huge, giant cascade of things happening, all right? So your body is going to, the baroreceptor sense you have low fluid volume. That tells your brain to start producing some different hormones, right? Your kidneys are going to produce renin, right? All right. And while this process is happening, your liver is producing. I am a terrible artist. I'm just going to let you guys know that. So when I draw these organs, you're going to be like, what in the world did she draw? All right. So this is my boomerang liver. This is usually, yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? I'm going to write liver just so you guys look at it later and be like, I'm not sure why she did this. All right. So this is my liver, and my liver is going to produce angiotensinogen, right? Anytime you see antigen, that usually means that there's some kind of enzyme forming. Then your kidneys are going to produce renin, right? Let's see if you guys are right. Grade your own papers and be honest, all right? After the kidneys produce the renin, then we're going to produce angiotensin 1. Anybody know where that is produced? Carrie says angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 in the lungs. Okay, so there is an enzyme here that is required, you're absolutely right, in order for this to convert from 1 to 2. The enzyme is ACE, right? Okay, and she's absolutely right. Who said it? Uh, Carrie. Carrie, all right, Watkins. Carrie's right. All right, so ACE, this is going to be produced in the lungs, all right? Which you guys have seen ACE before because we have a drug class called ACE inhibitors. Does anybody know what the biggest adverse effect of ACE inhibitors are? I'm going to keep writing while you're talking about that. Oh, let's do this one. Beverly Elizabeth and Cassidy with cough, dry ah, cough. Do you see why? So in ACE inhibitors, because they're inhibiting this enzyme, it's going to cause this dry, annoying cough in the dum -da -dum, lungs. And that's where you get that. You get an increase of bradykinin, and it causes this dry, annoying cough. So in ACE inhibitors, that's why, because this ACE is produced in the lungs. So we have renin produced by the kidneys. We're producing angiotensin 1. ACE enzyme, or angiotensin converting enzyme, is formed in the lungs that goes to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 takes a couple different pathways, all right? One pathway is it's going to take, is it's going to produce aldosterone. Where is aldosterone produced? I want to know that. The other thing that angiotensin II produces is ADH. And I also want to know where that is produced from or what tells the body to produce that. Angiotensin II is also a potent vasoconstrictor. Okay? So... And we're going to walk through this whole thing again. I just want you guys to give me some answers, okay? If we vasoconstrict, right, then that means my vessel is going to change to here. When I vasoconstrict, that is going to increase my blood pressure. So different ways that the RAS system is going to increase blood pressure. One I really says pituitary. Okay. Of the vasoconstrictions, when we vasoconstrict, that increases my blood pressure, right, through vasoconstriction. All right. Then you have aldosterone, which is produced by the... Nobody... They probably did, we just haven't caught up yet. Surely they know this. All right, so aldosterone is produced by the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands are gonna produce aldosterone and aldosterone's job is to increase sodium and water retention, all right? And that's gonna come in handy in a second when we do our science experiment. So it's gonna increase sodium and water retention. So that means that I'm going to hold in sodium and water. Well, I'm already vasoconstricting and now I'm gonna add more fluid volume because I'm adding in sodium and water. So now you see how much fluid volume that we have in here. You vasoconstricted, we've got sodium and water retention. Then your posterior pituitary 
is releasing ADH. ADH's job is to increase just plain water retention, all right? So it's gonna increase water retention. And we're gonna have this whole thing as a picture for you guys on Facebook after we're done with this too. So if I increase water retention, that's again gonna raise my fluid volume again. So I have had raise my fluid volume, raise my fluid volume, vasoconstrict, which should bring me to a normal blood pressure, right? All three of those things together. And that should be the job of the RAS system. So let's walk through it really quickly. All right, we've got bare receptors inside your vessels that are gonna sense low fluid volume. When they sense low fluid volume, they're gonna send messages to all these places in your body, I need some help, let's start out this RAS system to increase our blood pressure. Because if we get hypotensive, then we are not gonna get enough blood flow to our organs. Our organs won't get perfusion and they will die. So this is a little bit important, yeah? All right, so we have bare receptors. They've sensed that, whoa, we have low fluid volume. Our body's gonna start producing renin. Renin is made in the kidneys. We're also gonna produce angiotensinogen. That's gonna start off this whole thing, all right? Then we're gonna do, we're gonna produce angiotensin one, which by way of ACE, made in the lungs, is gonna produce angiotensin two. Angiotensin two takes several different ways and pathways. One thing that it does is it tells the adrenal glands to produce aldosterone, which causes sodium and water retention. Then it also tells your posterior pituitary to release ADH, which causes water retention. And it also is vasoconstricting. So all three of those mechanisms together, vasoconstrict, increase, increase, increase fluid volume. Now we have a normal blood pressure. Say yeah? Oh yeah. Let's try our science experiment because I'm super excited. Yeah. Shall we? Let's do it. All right. So a lot of students have a hard time understanding the concept or what happens to your sodium and potassium or mainly sodium whenever you have a disease that increases your ADH or a disease that increases your aldosterone or vice versa, okay? So we're gonna try this and see how it works. Please, Lord. All right, so here we go. So these two here are gonna be um, our uh, vessels, all right? So this is the fluid that's going on inside of our vessels. We have isotonic things going on in our vessels. That means that there's a normal amount of sodium and a normal amount of fluid volume inside the vessels, okay? Then I'm gonna talk about what will happen if you increase ADH and what will happen if you increase aldosterone, okay? So. Real quick, soy sauce from the Philippines wants yes. to know what the function again is for angiotensinogen again. Angiotensinogen is an enzyme that's gonna start out to this whole process, all right? So it's getting the whole thing started. Your liver is super, super important and people kind of ignore the liver, but it's got 13 functions and we're gonna have that for, um, for another video too, okay? All right. So here's what's going on inside our body. So inside of our vessels, we have normal fluid volume and this is gonna be our sodium. So when you see green, that's sodium, okay? So I'm just gonna put a normal amount of what we would see sodium concentrate inside our vessels, okay? And we're gonna start with the pink spoon because everything we do here is pink. Thanks, Casey. Okay, so this is inside our vessels. This is sodium, this is fluid. This is where we kind of normally live, all right? Now here we have ADH. That was antidiuretic hormone. The purpose of antidiuretic hormone, remember to diurese means to get rid of fluid. So if it's antidiuretic hormone, then we're not getting rid of fluid and we're holding it in. But what does ADH increase? ADH just increases our water, okay? So if you have a condition that increases your ADH, like SIADH, sy uh, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, then we'll see what happens to your sodium. So here's what's going on inside our body, all right? If I have SIADH, okay, or any condition that's gonna cause increased ADH inside my body, all right, so my posterior pituitary, maybe I had a brain tumor, or maybe I was in a motor vehicle accident, maybe I had some kind of brain swelling, and I I've, I've now have SIADH, that's gonna make your body produce a bunch of ADH, okay? So I'm gonna start holding water in. So I'm gonna take just plain water, remember this is our sodium concentration inside our body, all right? Now I'm gonna increase my ADH, which is just plain water. So what does that do to the color? it's going to dilute my sodium causing hyponatremia, okay? So anytime you have a condition that increases a bunch of ADH, your sodium level will go low. Do you see how it's much more clear? And if we stir, you can see there's not quite as many particles as there were before. That's what ADH does. Go with me, okay. Here's inside my body and we have aldosterone. So aldosterone's job, we remember up here, is to increase sodium in water, okay? So this here is full of just plain water and I'm gonna add a bunch of sodium to it because that's what aldosterone is, it's sodium water, right? Oh, I could just eat this whole thing instead. Just 
makes me want cupcakes. All right. So now if I have a condition that increases aldosterone, does anybody know what kind of condition would increase aldosterone? Hint, we've already covered it in here in another video. So if you watched our videos, you should know. I'll give you guys a second and then you're about to watch some magic. Ready? Raina says DI. DI. Okay. DI. Cassidy is says Addison's. Addison's disease is decreased aldosterone. Lindsay says Cushing's. Cushing's disease is increased aldosterone. All right. Da ding ding. Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Cook. Lindsay. Lindsay Cook, you got it, girl. All right, so Lindsay Cook says that Cushing's. We did cover Cushing's in another video, so if you need to review that one, there's another video for you guys to take a look. All right, so Cushing's disease causes increased cortisol levels and increased aldosterone levels because both of those are produced by the adrenal glands and our adrenal gland is overworking. So since aldosterone is sodium in water and I increase the aldosterone in my body, what happens to my color? It's gonna get a darker green, meaning I have a lot more salt inside. So most of the time when patients have increased aldosterone, they're gonna be hypernatremic, yes? So increase my ADH, hyponatremia. Increase my aldosterone, hypernatremia. I think we nailed it. <laughs> so good. Questions? Dun, da, da, da. Now who wants to drink? Mm. I know, it's nice and thick. The osmolality is very thick, yes? Increase osmolality. All right, so that's how those work. So if you can remember your different disease processes, if they increase ADH or what ADH does, what aldosterone does, and now you can kind of see how they balance that, right? So if my patient has a lot of salt in their body, then I may increase my ADH in order to maintain homeostasis or give me a little bit more water and dilute my sodium. Yeah? All right, so we talked about the functions of sodium and potassium. They're, they are going to exchange for each other. They're on a seesaw. They're meant to form action potentials or membrane potentials in order to contract things, okay? So that is gonna happen in our heart, it's gonna happen in our muscle. Both of them are balanced in the kidney. You guys should already know all this because we just did it. All right, so let's do a review. Um, so they're balanced in the kidney, but our potassium is mainly going to affect our heart and a little bit of muscle. And then our sodium is mainly going to affect brain. So anytime you think sodium, think neuro. Anytime you think potassium, think heart. Okay, I need to drink some, I'm getting real excited. Okay. Let's talk about our different signs and symptoms. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go Here, to I the can, board for this one. Yeah, let me take a picture of that for okay. everybody first. So we're gonna get a picture of this to take. Um, that way we can send it to you guys on Facebook. Okay, and everything we do up on the board will be sent on Facebook too. So um, we're gonna get set up for just a second. So while we're getting set up, I'm gonna give you guys an assignment. I would like for you to give me the signs and symptoms of hypo and hypernatremia and some rationales why. You guys should be coming in, giving me some hypo and hypernatremia symptoms, and tell me why. Because if you try to memorize these, it is going to do you little to no good. You will forget them. You'll get them mixed up. You have to understand why. And if you can give me a rationale why they have these, it will make much more sense on your exam than trying to memorize a list. We've all been there. We've all not memorized it super well. And so I want you guys to look at it differently. All right? Mark says hyponatremia is confusion. All right. Lindsay said hypernatremia is dry mouth, dehydration, swollen tongue. Ooh, oh, swollen tongue, isn't that terrible? Mm. That would be a bad day. All right, so we're gonna put sodium over here and we're gonna put potassium over here. Okay, and then we're gonna do Lindsay says hypo, confusion, seizure, headache. Mm -hmm. Rhonda, seizures with hyponatremia. Rhonda who? Williams. Hi, Rhonda Williams. You're getting it. Kelly says hyper is restlessness and irritability. Okay. So let's start with sodium. All right. Now we said that sodium is balanced in the kidneys, right? But anytime you think sodium, you want to think brain. You guys will not forget this after today. 
because that's where you're gonna see the signs and symptoms happen, right? So we talked about sodium and what its job is, it's gonna create electrical impulses, right? All right, so if we look at, let's start with hypo because it's on the lower end, all right? So in hyponatremia, you're gonna end up having our neuro symptoms such as headache, confusion, and we're gonna talk about each of these in a minute. Um, you guys have given me some other ones. Always remember seizure, coma, death, okay? So those are always gonna happen, seizures, coma. Yes, they can die, but I'm not gonna put death as a sign and symptom, okay? Um, and we can end up having cerebral edema. All right, so if we look at sodium and its job, remember we have a cell, we've got potassium on the inside, we have sodium on the outside, okay? And so what happens whenever we have low sodium is that we're not able to maintain a normal cell size, okay? And so if we have hyponatremia, then we know that we're gonna have our opposite, which would be hyperkalemia, all right? And so what can end up happening in these patients that have very, very low sodium is we can end up having cerebral edema, everything is going to swell, right? Because what follows sodium? water, right? And so you're going to have a bunch of water following sodium, right? And then you're going to end up getting cerebral edema. So remember sodium brain hypo is going to cause all of these neuro symptoms and the end result is going to end up being cerebral edema. Okay. Give me some conditions in which you would see hyponatremia. There was one, um, there was a, a case that they had not that long ago. It was a baby. Um, and this is one of the reasons why we don't give babies water under six months of age because they already have kind of a higher water content in their body, okay? And so what had happened was um, the parents didn't have enough formula to last them throughout the end of the month, so they were diluting the formula and giving a lot of extra water. Well, that baby ended up getting water intoxication. Our cells are gonna end up swelling, we're gonna get cerebral edema, and that baby ended up passing away from having too much water. So it's really, really important, one of the things you'll learn in PD is not to give water to babies babies under six months, they don't need extra water, they need formula or breast milk, okay? And so one of the things that you will see, or one of the reasons, I'm gonna erase this so we can write some of the reasons over here. Alicia said water. Yes, so water intoxication. They also had this really ridiculous um, contest on the radio several years ago to see how much water you could drink in a very short period of time, it was like 10 minutes or something like that, um, and you couldn't go to the bathroom. Well, one of the ladies ended up dying because she drank gallons and gallons of water in a very short period of time. And so, because she did that, she watered down her sodium, got hyponatremia, got cerebral edema, went into a coma, and she died. So don't do stupid contests. We ain't about that. A lot of fraternities do that. Stay away. Yes, don't do that. I mean, it's really, really ridiculous. So one of the, one of the um, things that can cause hyponatremia, if you guys have any more, shout them out at me, all right? So one of the things that can cause hyponatremia would be, oh, this is a very bright wonder. Oh, hey. Yes, all right, is water bright intoxication. like your future. Exactly, <laughs> I like that. So water intoxication, so anything where we are watering down, okay, we're watering down the sodium. So if I'm taking in a bunch of water, then I am diluting my sodium, causing hyponatremia, all right? There's a concept that gets thrown out there a lot called osmolality, um, to be quite honest with you. All during nursing school, I had no idea what osmolality was. I kind of knew what specific gravity was, but I didn't really have a very good grasp of what osmolality is. The easiest way for me to remember it, it's not necessarily the thickness or the viscosity, but that's kind of how I think of it in my mind. The more solute there is in there, the higher the osmolality. So osmolality just means how much solute or how much junk kind of is in there or stuff. And usually when they talk about osmolality, they're usually talking about how much salt concentration, right? So if I have hyponatremia, I don't have very much salt concentration there, therefore my osmolality would be low, okay? So that's just a quick, I wasn't even planning on doing that, it's just a fun fact for you guys. Let's hit some osmolality, all yeah. right? Um, so water intoxication would be one of the reasons, all right? There's another disease process we've already talked about today that can cause this. S-I-A-D-H. Lindsay Cook came in clutch with that. Oh, Lindsay Cook is on it today. Oh, she said she just graduated. Today. Oh, nice work, Lindsay. Good job. Congratulations. So S-I-A-D-H, which I don't know why in nursing school they don't just call it like lots of ADH disease because syndrome of inappropriate ADH, nobody can ever remember which way that this goes, okay? Um, but syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone means you have a lot of ADH. And we just did this on our science experiment. So you know that ADH just holds in water. And so if we're holding in extra water, that's going to dilute our sodium, right? And it's going to make our sodium go low. Y'all with me? All right. Let's do hypernatremia, all right? 
So I'm going to write that on here because people get their electrolytes a little mixed up. So this is hyponatremia. And now we're going to do hypernatremia. Somebody give me your normal levels for sodium while we're doing this. And then give me your signs and symptoms of hypernatremia. Okay, when I think of hypernatremia, you've got a ton of salt. Now, let's be honest, we're all in nursing school. We all binge eat sometimes mm. because eating your feelings sometimes feels okay. So if you're sitting in front of the TV and you're just Netflix binging because you failed a test or you did something stupid in clinical or you came home covered in you know, a schizophrenia patient's poo smears on the wall. Ugh. That happened to me because when I was in nursing school, the mirrors were all white. I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys still have to wear that. Oh, it's terrible. Why I would did. they send a student into clinical wearing all white? Into a C. diff room. Terrible. It's like the worst thing ever. So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, hypernatremia is high sodium, all right? And so if you have ever sat in front of Netflix and binged eat and you take a whole bag of tortilla chips or pretzels or gravy, whatever it is that you need to do, and you're taking in a whole bunch of salt, all right? What does that make your mouth feel like? We have a lot of it's sodium like, levels, 135, 140. All right, so you guys got the levels, so we're gonna do 135 to 145. Hypernatremia would be over 145. So if you're, you're in front of the TV and you're eating all these things, your mouth is gonna feel really dry, right? If you mm. eat a bunch of salt. So they typically will get dry mouth. Okay. Then after you eat all that salt, the next day your fingers kind of feel a little puffy. You're going to get a little bit of edema because you've taken in a lot of salt. The water likes to follow that. Okay. And so we're going to end up getting a little bit of edema, little puffy fingers, feel like little sausages. Maybe I'm not feeling quite so thin that day. Okay. And so some other things that you're typically going to see, remember brain, right? So they're going to have the same ones that we see down here. They're also going to end up getting seizures, coma, Cerebral edema, okay. Because we've got fluid going into the cell causing cell swelling or we have fluid coming out of the cell causing brain swelling. So either way, you're gonna end up with some cerebral edema. So if you think about it, let's tell me what kind of conditions would cause hypernatremia. You guys shout out to me. It's weird when I say shout and then nobody shouts it. Ah, I say, yeah, thank you. I got you. Ah. <laughs> it's a common in. <laughs> All right. So think about it. If these were things where we were gaining a bunch of water and diluting, then these would be things that we were losing DI. a bunch of just, oh, hey. Cushing. Okay. So we are going to end up with DI because, or DI is going to cause it, because in DI, we are getting rid, or we're increasing um, our, no, decreasing our ADH, getting rid of our fluid, right? So if we're just getting rid of a bunch of water, then that's gonna leave me a little salty, okay? Mm. And not in the emotional way, but the actual way, you're gonna be salty. So DI can do that. So DI will leave you with hypernatremia. What else? What'd they say? Uh, Cushing's ESRD. Cushing's, why would Cushing's do that? Because remember, in Cushing's, it increases our cortisol and aldosterone, and aldosterone is salty. And so if we're increasing our salts, then we can end up getting hypernatremia, all right? The other one that we will see sometimes is, now watch, be careful of this on your exam. This is a fun fact, but a careful fun fact. Watery diarrhea, and they will say that on your exam. If it says watery diarrhea, then that means um, that we are losing a lot of water. And so if you're losing a lot of water, then you're gonna end up salty. But remember, this is gonna be gross when I say it and I already know it, diarrhea is salty. Don't taste it. Mm. But diarrhea is salty in and of itself. So if you just have plain diarrhea, you can get hyponatremic, plain diarrhea. But if it's watery diarrhea, that means you're losing a lot of water, then you're gonna end up salty, okay? All right. So we have hypernatremia, we have hyponatremia. Are you guys ready to move on to some potassium? All right. So I want you guys to give me some signs and symptoms of hyper and hypokalemia. I also want the lab level for potassium, okay? So while I'm jotting down some things, I'd like you to give me that. That's your assignment, okay? So hook me up, please. I need some help. Need somebody help. help, not just anybody. Help. Yes, you can find me on iTunes. 
iTunes. Just kidding. Becky said 3.5 to 5. All right. Nice work. Becky? All right. So we're at 3.5 to 5.0 is our potassium level. All right. So since we started with hypo before, let's start with hypokalemia. I'm going to write that on here because sometimes we get a little mixed up. All right. All right, so hypokalemia. So if you remember correctly, we talked about how potassium is mostly heart symptoms, right? Mostly heart, so I'm gonna do a big heart up here. And it's a little bit of muscle, all right? So I'm gonna write a little muscle inside of here, okay? So mostly heart, a little muscle, but the heart is a muscle too, so that's why you're typically gonna see mostly heart symptoms. So with hypokalemia, Raina says weak pulse and muscle weakness. Okay, so if the purpose of our potassium is to produce electricity and produce action potential, right, and membrane potential, then if we don't have potassium, then we're not producing any electricity, right? So everything's going to be weak and tired because we don't have any electricity to produce anything. So that's why we usually see, well, number one across the board always will be dysrhythmias, right, because we talked about big heart. So, I don't know how to spell dysrhythmias. Just Dysryth okay, yes, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Nailed it, spelling bee champion eighth grade. Thank you very much, I did. It was not on dysrhythmias. All right, so biggest thing is gonna be hearts. Little bit of muscle, so think, if we're not producing any, any membrane potentials and our electricity is low, then our muscles are gonna be, help me out, okay? Weak. Weak, okay, thank you. So we're gonna have muscle weakness, okay? What's gonna happen to my pulse? It's gonna get slow, but weak, ready. I'm gonna feel very lethargic. Yeah, I'm not gonna are. wanna move and mm. do anything. Okay. Pulse low. Things aren't going real well inside. Get low, the get low. You scared, you scared. <laughs> I knew I could count on you for that. I knew it, I knew it. Alright. And then in my gut, I'm not really producing anything either. My gut's slow, my gut's weak, so I'm going to have constipation. Okay. Oh. Ain't nobody want that either, mm -hmm. okay? But as soon as you guys see hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, anything about potassium, first thing you should think about, da dum 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 all right? So dysrhythmia is your first thing. If, if there is a potassium problem, you better get that patient on an EKG very quickly because we need to treat those dysrhythmias. Know what I'm saying? All right, give me some things that could cause low potassium. I need some causes. Why would you have low potassium? Remember that it is maintained in kidney that the potassium comes out in our urine and pin. This is how I don't, this is how I flirt. This is why I don't date. I'm like, oh, people busting down your doors. <laughs> diarrhea, Alicia. Okay, sometimes diarrhea can do that. I don't agree with you. We can sometimes lose some potassium. A lot of times it's gonna be vomiting can do that. All right. Lindsay usually, Cassidy diuretics. And oh, yes, I'm going to come back to that too. So diarrhea is usually a little bit more salty, but you can lose some potassium. Vomiting has a lot of potassium too, so we would look for that, especially if they were vomiting more so. What'd she say? Diuretic use? Yes. All right, so diuretics, yes. So if the purpose of a diuretic, such as Lasix, HCTZ, something like that, if the purpose of it is to make us pee, right, no matter what the mechanism of action looks like, if we're peeing more and we know that our potassium comes out in the pee, then we're peeing and a lot of our potassium is going with it. So almost always diuretics are going to cause hypokalemia if they're straight diuretics. Okay. Uh, Becky says renal failure. Daniel says diuretic caffeine insufficient of ADH. Low sodium dehydration can lead to Daddy hypokalemia. Did that. Ooh, Ooh, Daniel coming in clutch. <laughs> so if they're dehydrated because we have lost a lot of fluid through the kidneys, then that could happen. Sometimes if they're dehydrated when we've lost fluid other ways, it'll almost make them look like they have hyperkalemia just because of the concentration, okay? So we've got diuretics, we've got mostly vomiting, sometimes a little bit of, um, of diarrhea. What about DKA? Sometimes, okay, the DKA is tricky, and I well, we need to do a whole thing on DKA, so I'm just gonna go over this really quickly. I'm actually gonna put DKA on, oh, oh I think I think some... good people. <laughs> I knew it, I can count on you. All right, so DKA um, can go, and make, make our potassium go low, or it can make our potassium go high. And here's the very quick and easy reason why, and we'll have a whole video on this, so don't panic on me. So if you have DKA, right, and you are a type one diabetic, and you are completely lacking in insulin, okay, there is an insulin potassium pump. 
So insulin's job is to open your cells, right? Well, whenever I open the cells, the potassium is gonna come out. I'm gonna draw it really quick, all right. So we know, because I drew it earlier, that your potassium lives inside the cells usually, right? And so insulin's job is to open up the cells to allow the glucose to come in to uptake it in order to use it for energy. So if the insulin will come in, right, um, usually it goes on a pump. So insulin's gonna open up the gate. Uh, whenever this gate is open, the potassium's gonna come out and the insulin's gonna come in. So they go also on an inverse relationship, right? So if a type one comes in and they're lacking insulin, sometimes they can come in with hyperkalemia severely, right? But once we start to give them fluids, that's gonna make a drastic because we usually give them normal saline. Normal saline is salty, right? And what goes on is sea salt, all right? So if I come in and I have no insulin, right? And so I have no insulin. If I'm very, very low on insulin, that means my potassium may originally be high, right? I'm gonna put this over here. Then I start to give them normal saline, that's salt. So as I give them salt, this potassium may go down. So you may see hypokalemia or hyperkalemia with DKA, right? I'm gonna erase this, cause that was just a little fun fact for you. I think we'll do a whole thing on DKA cause that one's really fun. Okay, so we'll come back. I just want you guys Claudia to Claudia said, my yes, DKA, next please. <laughs> yes, everybody wants that one. We had a lot of people asking for that one. All right, so we understand why we would get hypokalemia. So think, anything that's gonna make you, usually, anything that's gonna make you pee a lot, all right, which is normal urine, not just one ADH or aldosterone or those kind of things. Um, if you're just plain peeing, then usually the potassium is gonna go out with that, okay? That's why we usually see with diuretics, DKA, those kind of things. All right, so let's talk hyperkalemia. So high potassium. And remember, we talked about potassium does what? Electrical activity, right? So if I, I know, if I have hyperkalemia and it's bup, 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 then everything's gonna be really excited, right? So let's put hyperkalemia up here. Becky says muscle tremors. You know it, girl. All right, so we got hyperkalemia. So signs and symptoms that we see, everything is gonna be going electrically haywire. Potassium is mostly heart. So we're always gonna put dysrhythmias. That's your number one. As soon as you see a patient with hyperkalemia, first thing you do, EKG. Okay, you guys knew. You guys knew. I knew you do. I knew you knew. All right, so dysrhythmias are going to be first. It looks like I didn't spell it right, but I really did. Okay, so dysrhythmias, all right? So everything is excited, right? And so we may end up having chest pain, which is called angina, okay? Because everything's really excited. So your heart's like, which is going to cause some palpitations. Sambo, Sambo, peak T waves. Ah, yes, I'm gonna come and talk about that in just a minute, I'm so glad you said that. So you can also get, if your nerves are all excited and everything's going crazy, you can get some paresthesias, right? So paresthesias, when our nerves kind of go a little haywire and we get that pen prick tingling kind of thing, okay? And so we will also get muscle twitches, muscle cramps, right? Because why? We're twitching, 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 right? And everything is really, really excited. So if you're looking at potassium, and I, who said the T waves? Uh, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Sambo, Sambo? It's okay. probably not Sambo. So we're usually going to see a T wave. I'm bad at EKG drawing too. <laughs> the Lord did not grace me with artistic ability, but he did give me medical knowledge. So that's here. what I'm here to impart on you Everybody's today. good at something. So usually in this, the good Lord made this good too. Hyperkalemia, high potassium, peaked T wave, high T wave. Okay. Hypokalemia. What do you think? Inverted T wave. So it goes kind of low, okay? So peaked T wave, and I'll write that for high. So Marina, uh, Marina said tall T waves, prolonged P waves. You got it. All right. So other than DKA, give me some causes of hyperkalemia. Remember, it comes out in your urine. <laughs> Oh, we're just getting the inverted T waves. Oh, everybody helped. Oh, I didn't write that. I'm gonna write that up here too. Okay, inverted T waves. Elizabeth said sparing diuretic, kidney failure, DKA. Okay, DKA, kidney failure. So we can either have CKD. Oh, help it's us. okay. Okay, CKD, chronic kidney disease, or kidney failure, or acute kidney injury, whatever they are, okay. So this means that my kidneys are not working very well. And if my kidneys aren't working very well, we're not getting rid of urine. So if I have oliguria, which means I'm not peeing very much, 
then I don't have any, or all my potassium can't come out with that urine because no urine coming out, right? So you will end up having hyperkalemia and kidney failure, right? Okay, so we've got DKA, CKD, kidney failure, anything else I missed? Dun, dun. Good, everybody's happy with their life. Too much potassium, if you just take in too much potassium or you're on yeah, too potassium much potassium replacements, burns, Addison's. Yes. Okay, and if you have, um, oh, here's a good question to ask you guys. If you get this one right, I'll be really excited for you. There is a medication that makes you pee, okay, but it actually causes hyperkalemia. Tell me what the drug is and tell me why it does it. Oh, they got this. I can tell. I got a feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can do it. Is it getting scary? Spirolactone. Okay, spirolactone can do it because that's a potassium sparing. I absolutely agree with you. That one's a diuretic, right? But it can, it's potassium sparing. It's not going to bring the potassium with the urine. So you will still urinate, but it's holding the potassium in. Claudia says Lasix. Lasix causes hypokalemia. What else we got? Hydrochlorothiazide. HCTZ still causes hypokalemia. It's a diuretic, right? We're looking for a drug class that's not a diuretic. But they're trying. Nobody. Oh, uh, we're still getting diuretics in. Okay. Hmm. KX Elite. Okay, KX Elite. Oh, okay. Well, that is a call. Oh, oh. Oh. That's, oh. Not, that's not the one I was thinking of. But you're right. Um, KX Elite can decrease our potassium. So if you're giving too much, maybe. Um, but not the drug I was thinking of. KX Elite, remember, is an antidote for high potassium. So it doesn't really cause high potassium. Um, but it can decrease your hyperkalemia. ACE inhibitors. That's what I was looking for. Who said? Miguel and Perla. Miguel and, and Claudia Perla? and Allison. Oh, so they did come in with it. All right. They did. So our ACE inhibitors, remember, we already put those up on the board. So the ACE inhibitors were going to not allow you to um, do your ACE, um, which is your enzyme that converted angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, right? And since that means that we are not keeping in sodium because we're not producing aldosterone, it cuts off that RAS system right there, then we will get rid of sodium and cause increased potassium. All right, so there we have it. Sodium, potassium. So biggest things you need to remember, sodium and potassium both go on a sea salt, right? Sodium and potassium are maintained and balanced through the kidney. Sodium, you're high or low, you're usually gonna see brain or neuro symptoms. Potassium, High or low, you're usually gonna see heart symptoms with a little bit of muscle symptoms, all right? So, if you guys have any questions about that, I want you to let me know. Um, I do want you guys to leave in the comments because we're almost out of time. Um, give me my good sources of sodium if you need a little bit higher and my good sources of potassium. And I'm gonna leave you with one fun question to answer. This is hard. All right, there is a drug that if you have hyponatremia, it will cause you to go into toxicity of that drug. There is a drug that if you are hypokalemic, it will cause you to go into toxicity of that drug. That is our last fun fact question. Okay, and if you guys have any questions, pop them out to me. That's all we have time for today. We'll do another one at some other time um, on a couple of the other electrolytes and how those balance with each other. Okay, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to... Dum, da, da, dum. Text nursing to eight five one zero zero. Okay, um, and then next week I think um, we might do another one next week, but we do have a big one coming up. We're going to team up with SimpleNursing.com for a joint video, and that's going to be on July the twenty first. We're going to do a video with Angie from Simple Nursing. If you guys are are on their Facebook, um, and we're going to do personality disorders, so that one's going to be fun because. I'm weird and I'm probably gonna act out a lot of things. You're not gonna wanna miss that one. I promise you, you will never forget personality disorders for the rest of your life. So you gotta make sure you do that. Make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube, text nursing to 85100 so you can get all of our texts. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, I think let's do a giveaway. You wanna do a giveaway? Yeah, I do. Fun. Okay, so if you answer in the comments my question about sodium and potassium, I'm ask it again, and you get it right for both of them, then we'll enter your name into a giveaway to win something from our boutique. We have a really cool nursing boutique. You wanna go grab something real quick and we'll show it, whatever it is. Like, oh, like, I can't wait. Yeah, okay, so then I we'll show you guys what we can do. I know, I just surprised it a giveaway. I like to give stuff away. Okay, so the question was, there is a drug 
that if you get hyponatremia, it's going to cause toxicity of that drug. Then there is another drug that if you get hypokalemia, it causes toxicity of that drug. All right. If you guys comment, you get both of them right. We're going to do a giveaway. Case is getting something ready for you guys that we will mail to you, send to you, what have you, no matter where you live. Oh, she got some things. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's what we will give away. Okay. We have a Ivy League tutoring Starbucks tumbler, which is fun. You guys need coffee in your life. You need lots and lots of coffee in your life. We will give a nursing school survival shot shot glass. I'm not going to say you need a lot of alcohol in your life. I'm not going to say it. I may be thinking it, but I'm not going to say it. Okay, so this is super cute. You can use that at nursing school. And then she also chose this, which is a, it's another little tumbler that you can use to put, you know, water, of course, or orange juice, just not grapefruit juice because that interacts with all our people or 50 all cytochromes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you like how I added that in. And this is cute too. It says nursing is a work of heart. It's mm. precious. I know. So it's like drink your coffee, drink your alcohol, drink your water. You're going to be really, really ready to go. So we'll Really hydrated. Away. Yes, really hydrated. Um, so we'll do that giveaway. So if you guys answer both of them right, we will we'll choose a winner, and that's what we're going to do. Okay? Um, we'll let you know what we're going to do for next week. We're kind of, we got some things in the works. We're thinking about some things. So let us know what you want. You can message us. You can put something on our Facebook. You can email us at ivyleaguetutoring at gmail.com. Um, we also have a brand new website. So we've got some videos that are going to be loading onto it this week. Um, but if you guys want to go check it out and kind of see what do we do here, because we're sort of crazy and weird, we like to do fun things in nursing. So if you want to be a part of what we do, or you're interested in tutoring, you're interested in doing one-on-ones or individual group sessions, um, check out our website. It's www.iv, no I, not IV. It's like IV as in like an intravenous line. You see what we did there? So www.ivleaguetutoring.org, and you can check out our new website, see what we do. Send us a message. We've got cool things on there too. So it was really cool to hang out with you guys today. I'm really glad you participated. You did awesome today. I'm really, really proud of y'all. And we will probably see you next week, but stay tuned here because I pop in with live videos here and there to let you guys know what's on the horizon. We definitely need to do a DKA one, so that's kind of in the works too. And don't forget, July 21st, we'll be doing the personality disorder with simplenursing.com. All right. You guys have an awesome day. If you need anything, we are here to help. Have a good one.